So welcome Deanna Briotti to the stage. It was January and my heart was breaking. So I pulled on my thickest skin and reacquainted myself with the cold. It seemed right that I should shiver and that the world should sprawl like Eve now fallen, naked and ashamed. It seemed right that I should walk this world, amble up and down old steel town streets, their inarticulate ache upholding my feet. So for hours and hours, day after day, I put one numb foot down in front of the other and I tattooed my heels with the press of this place and I sang sad songs as I walked, and I doodled sad poems in the fog of my breath, but my footfalls were poignant, more than song and poem both, and the laments they composed made my art seem afar, so I abandoned my efforts, walked silent and meek, allowing my weight and the pavement to speak, and you would not believe it. The concertos that came from shoe upon asphalt, leather on land, and under the spell of such steadying sound, I cried without tears for the sick love I'd harbored, for the sickness in man. And the streets heard me weep, and the streets wept back. So we composed in the cold a concert of grief, my sore heart and the old steel town. I passed a foreclosed lot on my right. It wailed for the shops and the touristing flocks that had fled when steel turned obsolete. And the mines spat back now obsolete men. The lot missed the patter of prosperous feet and it slandered the silence that had moved in since then. Not a silence of peace, but a silence of lack. The stillness of haunting omission. And as I passed by, the lots past caught my eye and it murmured aloud this horrible question. What if I'm never wanted again? Two blocks farther along, I passed a man pacing, holding his phone like a gun to his head, but the bullets poured out from his mouth and I pitied the girl who received them. Every syllable burst out sharp and profane. Every choice of diction dripped thick with disdain. This girl was his dog. No, a dog's fucking bone. And though he bit and he snapped, she stayed on the phone. Even though he pointed and shot and pointed and shot and pointed and shot, she flailed out like an all too cooperative target, taking more lead in the head than any strong buck could stand. Yet I could not condemn her. Couldn't count her a fool without stringing myself up in the same shame-stricken noose, for I too had loved a bad man. Looked a gun in the face and said, shoot. An old woman sat on the porch to my left. Wrapped in a comforter and too plainly comfortless, she smiled at me as I passed. A smile now husbandless, childless, toothless. The world had been ruthless to her. You could see in her eyes and the pull of her cheeks that life had not been what youth dreamed it would be for the prisons had stolen her loves, set them up to steep in their crimes, an impossible distance from this aging woman and every new need which her aging designed. She was tired more than anything. Tired of affection's long affair with deception. Tired of being a plaything for rejection. Tired enough to nestle deep in the arms of the cold. Watch her breath and her failing years freeze and smile at the living who passed. So I smiled back and walked on. On through the naked and gray. Through the shattering winds while the spring lay dead and the hope of tomorrow slept. For seven days... The town and I cried. And as the blocks slipped by and our griefs harmonized, we realized we weren't so different. Both born of glory, heirs to the same sickness. The old steel town, yet another victim of hope stored in insecure places. She in a metal, I in a man, both proving themselves in time to be faithless and both leaving a ruin behind them. <laughs> 